as you look around, you can see this bowl really taking shape now. About 40% of the competition bowl has been completed. And anybody who's visited the UNO Athletics Facebook page in the last month or so has seen some terrific aerial shots. Our thanks to Brad Williams Photography for those really showing how this project is taking place. So as always, we get our updates from Steve Gusweiler, who's the project manager for Cuba Construction. And Steve, you had mentioned to me about 40% of the bowl done here. And uh, that work is really moving forward. Tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. Yep, we are seeing the uh, the main bowl of the arena taking shape here. Uh, a lot of the precast or the bowl arena bowl uh, riser steel that we've talked about in the past yep. is starting to take shape. You can see some of the intimus and paint uh, starting to get applied to the steel. Uh, that's going on. A lot of the structural steel that's going to be exposed to public view, so it's a little nicer finish. Sure. Uh, we're doing some of the concourse decking right now because we're planning on pouring the concourse uh, concrete on metal deck here in a, in a few weeks. Really? Okay. Uh, and start that work. Uh, and it's just taking shape. Sure. And the paint, as you described it to me before, that's been applied to the practice arena as well. It's not just a finish that's for looks, it also serves a purpose. Yes, that's a, it's an intimescent fireproofing, so if it gets exposed to heat, uh, it'll actually expand to protect that steel to protect the structure. Wow, so. that's remarkable. So this project is obviously going along uh, very well. You've got a lot still to do, though, and one of the uh, aspects of it that I found very interesting was the trusses that you'll put up that will, will form the roof. There's quite a process to that, isn't there? Yes, there's quite a process. A lot of pre-engineering goes in that. We've actually got a truss, truss erection plan that we actually put together that goes down to step-by-step step of how we're going to erect all these trusses from the shoring towers to the racks they're going to be built in uh, before we even fly one single piece of steel. So uh, we can look at that plan. Uh, well, actually, we've gotten enough of the bull erected out in front of it that we've worked with the structural engineer that we can start here in a few weeks. We've timed that out. Wow. So we've got the bull out and far in front of it that will start here July 14th, 15th, start building those trusses and racks and start flying them up shortly after that. We've talked so much about how the, the planning is such a large part of that, and you've got a document that can kind of show us how this, the trusses are going to go up, right? Yes, we do. Yep. Let's go take a look at that. Great. Okay, so uh, here's actually that truss erection plan that we were kind of talking about out in the field. Yeah. This is actually engineered by a third party mm -hmm. that uh, specializes in truss erection for arenas and yeah. all over the country. So we actually, uh, through Drake Williams and Davis Erection, they actually hired a third party specialist, like I was saying, and they go through this and actually put down a step-by-step -step plan down to how these things are going to be built in the actual racks and yeah. what bolts they have to have and which ones they uh, will have that they'll bolt up in the air. Uh, and then once they get a half done, it actually spells out which half, where it's going to go, and then all the support steel step by step. This piece first, this, sec this piece is second. You got to have these bolts before this step can happen. And then uh, when you can decenter the actual shoring tower that's going to be in the middle of the two halves. So mm -hmm. we can kind of show you here the first step. We're actually going to uh, where we were standing out there and we were kind of looking at some of the bull steel. Yeah, we was, were right about there probably. Yeah, we were right, right yeah. about there. Uh, and we, were, we could see some of the bull steel. We've left out part of those risers uh, purposely. Yeah. Uh, that's the bottom part of the precast bull. We've left those out just to get a, enough room for the truss erection and actually when we get to the bull erection mm -hmm. uh, so we can get a little bit more room and get up tight. So this actually, the first one will be the T2. Uh, we'll erect, we'll put the shoring tower in here and it's designed for all the soil, bear, soil bearing pressure, uh, what the pad is going to be for that uh, shoring tower. So we'll come in once it's built in the rack. Uh, they'll come up and fly this half up here, and then they'll put some of the supporting steel in here. So this kind of spells out where the crane's going to be, where the shoring tower is going to be, uh, and absolutely everything. And then it goes through step by step what they have to do. And you've got two cranes here, so I mean yep. we're obviously talking about something that's. What's the weight on just one half of these trusses? Uh, w one half of these trusses is around ninety thousand pounds total. The truss is about one hundred eighty thousand pounds. So uh, when you kind of look in here, you'll see you erect a, a half, and then you start putting in the supporting steel. Uh, so that that can stand by itself before you take it off. And then you come down here, put the other half in, supporting steel, and then we can kind of click through here real quick, and you can kind of see where the crane goes, and then you get the shoring tower. They set this up. Once this is 
all set and you got the supporting steel and it can stand by itself, there's stipulations in the step by step, then you can uh, put the second half in here or this yeah. next this next line 6.1 so you put that half in here and then you put the supporting steel and then you can decenter uh, the last grid line that you did that shoring tower and move it to the next one so you can kind of see that when you're clicking through here and Click obviously in a process like this nothing is left to chance you've even got mapped out where the truck carrying the beams is going to park in order to make everything work right. Correct. Yep. And uh, where all the staging is going to be and any uh, cherry pickers or uh, man lifts are going to be. Uh, and then you, you kind of work from west to east. And then it go, gets all the way down to where we're going to uh, truck out of the actual arena when we set this last half here. And then just according to room here, we'll be backing out of the dock area C, we've kind of talked about in the past, of actually leaving a little bit of the steel out for this so we can get the crane out. And then we'll be outside the actual arena bowl and set the last uh, uh, support steel. So the end, of, the end of the bowl won't actually be finished until you've got a good chunk of those trusses already put in. Yeah, we'll be, we're erecting the, the arena bowl, so to speak, right now, and we're out in front. We've been working with the structural engineer to where we're out in the front far enough to where we can start the truss erection, and we've timed it out to the sequence of the truss uh, erection. We'll never catch up, so we'll be erecting the trusses back on the, on the west side, and we'll be doing the rest of the arena bowl. By the time we get down a grid line or two, the arena bowl will be finished and then we'll finish out the, the trusses and then put the, the roof support steel for that truss. Yeah. So. Well, Steve, this is all really fascinating stuff, and uh, we can't wait to see those those first trusses go up. It's a it's a process that'll take several months, won't it? Yes, it'll take, it, it'll, we're going to start here in the middle of July. Uh, the, the pieces of steel will come. They'll set up the racks, and then they'll actually fabricate that half in the rack. They'll have two to three uh, racks set up so that they can try to get out ahead of themselves, and then hopefully... You know, the first one will probably be a little bit of a learning curve, and then they'll fly up that first piece, and then every day or two they'll be flying up halves and oh. putting the supporting steel. It will give fans something to look forward to and, yeah. and watch the progress going on. Steve, thanks for the update, and I uh, look forward to getting another one from you next month. Yep, thank you. It's a great day for a soccer game, and certainly Coniglia Field is a great venue for it. Soccer has certainly been on the minds of a lot of people lately because of the World Cup being contested right now in Brazil. And here to talk to us a little bit more about that, and a lot of other things too, is men's head coach Jason Menz. Jay, good to see you. Hi, Dave. And i got to tell you, this has been a lot of fun watching the U.S. Uh, compete. We've uh, just seen as we tape this, the U.S. take on uh, Portugal in a terrific game that was played yesterday. But tell us a little bit about how World Cup soccer and how it's raised the profile here in the U.S., because certainly the U.S. is a lot more competitive now than it has been in past years. It's, it's been incredible. The, you know, I think this is truly the first World Cup, Dave, that the U.S. actually doesn't need, which I think in the past, you know, whether it was the Major League, starting, Major League Soccer starting several years ago wanting to increase the league or if it was just trying to get the average fan to watch soccer to make it more popular. We've always needed a World Cup to kind of spike that soccer uh, generation, but we're finally to a point now, you know, I think with time has passed that it's here. You yeah. know, it's MLS has made it. Uh, you can see that it's evident by the crowds that they have from Kansas City to Portland, Seattle. It's incredible what soccer is doing here in the United States. So now it's just it's added you know that much more to it now and now it's uh it's really cool to see the soccer people this is their favorite time of the year once yeah. every four years but to see the the national media and everyone kind of you know taking the limelight it's it's fun for a for a soccer coach for sure yeah it's true i mean if you go back 10 years you think about watching espn or another channel like that you'd never see the scores on the ticker at the bottom uh -huh. you'd never see the games being carried live and and that certainly shows how much it's become this field certainly has has come a long way and what a terrific venue you just recently getting a, a, a two-star classification from FIFA. Tell us a little bit about that and what that means for the program. Sure. So FIFA goes around uh, across the world and they try to recognize artificial fields. Uh, I would say most of them aren't recognized and the ones that they do actually go and certify, uh, there's a certification process, pretty extensive and uh, thorough, and a lot of them are one-star um, across the world. I think there's not many in North America that are even FIFA one-star 
star certified, but as you mentioned, we were able to get a two star certification, which is, I mean, it's off the charts for, for FIFA. It's incredible. Basically, it means if we wanted to host U.S. versus Germany here on this artificial field, technically we could do that. And this is one of only four fields in the U.S., as I understand it, that has that, that classification. Uh, yes, I think there's a couple other ones. One in uh, Seattle, where the Seattle Sounders play, and Seahawks, and then uh, up in Boston, where the Patriots and the New England Revolution play. But yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very great, uh, it's a great accomplishment for UNO, and it's yeah, it's the only college soccer field in the in the country that has that rating. You and I have talked before about uh, facilities. Certainly, aren't the only thing, but it, it's a nice facility like this. Certainly helps you not only recruit good players, but it also helps you enlist good teams to come here and play you in the start of your season uh, less than two months away now. Uh, certainly features that when you look at teams like Stanford, Santa Clara, Cincinnati. Some pretty tough opponents coming up for uh, your program, which is you know still sort of in the new stages. Yeah, absolutely. What I tell people is uh, that you know we are, as you said, a brand new program, so uh, we'll get better as time goes on, and you know we're, we're okay now. We're getting better year by year, but what I tell people is to enter, to host a game, either have to have an incredible team to get some of those names you mentioned to come to your place, or you got to have an incredible facility, or you have both. Yeah. And you know our, our team's coming. We're getting there, but the facility, uh, what a first-class facility. And uh, so people, I think, are recognizing what we're doing here, and, and because of that, we're they're coming here. And it's great. Now we actually will have teams that come here. Then word spreads pretty quickly. They go back and tell their conferences. As you mentioned Stanford from the you know the Pac-12. Yeah. So now UCLA hears about it. You, right. know, you mentioned Cincinnati for the you know the new American Conference. Now UConn, some other schools hear about it. So it's it's great to try to get teams from across the country and sp some of these bigger conferences to come out and see actually what it is. Because you, you hear about it is one thing, but to actually have the players play on this surface, I think that's one of the most important things. Because the soccer player, you know, it doesn't matter the environment, or the atmosphere, you know, what you may have, but the most important thing to a soccer player is the actual quality of the field. Mm. You're starting to see that in Brazil a little bit, where some of the fields are, you know, a little bit beat up and yeah. choppy with the humidity. And but I think this is one of the nicest things about this field is that it's it plays like a true grass Bermuda field. It plays incredible, and so I think that's the neat part for these uh, opponents that come in. They'll actually get to see how the soccer, how it plays. So. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're a soccer fan and you didn't have a chance to see either the men's or the women's team play here last fall when they finally got onto this field, we've got two full seasons to be uh, to be had here beginning in uh, mid-August. So we hope you come on out, and Jay Mims, thanks for your time, and uh, best of luck to you this season. You got it. Thanks, Dave. So it's been another edition of Maverick Minutes. We're uh, really thankful that you've tuned in here at omavs.com, and we invite you to come back again next month for more updates from UNO Athletics. Until then, we'll see you.